Enter the world of Guo Wangi, a master of deception and subterfuge, whose life has been a tumultuous roller coaster ride of twists and turns. From his humble beginnings as a mushroom farmer, he rose to fame and fortune as a national hero, only to fall from grace and become an international outlaw. But what is it that drives this enigmatic figure? Is he a truth teller? bravely exposing the corruption and tyranny of the Chinese Communist Party, or is he a cunning manipulator, exploiting the fears and prejudices of his followers for his own personal gain? As you delve into the depths of Guo Wengi's past, you'll uncover a web of secrets and scandals that have altered the history books of both China and America. When it comes to Guo Wengi, Miles Guo, or Ho Wan Kwok, or any of his other aliases, nothing is quite as it seems. Born into a massive family with eight kids in Shandong, China, this guy started his journey as a mushroom farmer in Zhangzhou, and then he dabbled in the business of tires. Always discontent and an insatiable desire for riches, his future plans began to take shape. Epiphany struck like a bolt of lightning. The ultimate pathway to his wealth lies in the realm of real estate. He created the Zhengzhou Yuda Property Company, which was responsible for building the city's tallest tower of the time, the Yuda International Trade Center. But he wasn't satisfied, and so he moved on to another city, a theme we find that is quite common for Guo. He set his sights on Beijing and scored multiple construction contracts during the 2008 Olympics. This guy had a way about him. He could smooth over almost anyone he talked to to get what he wanted. But here's the kicker. This guy's true talent wasn't actually in real estate. His skill was in the art of deception, blackmail, and straight up lying. Guo Wangi's ruthlessness first came to light when he got his hands on a sex tape featuring a Beijing deputy mayor. And what did he do? He turned the tape over to the police because he was an upstanding citizen, at least from the outside looking in. As it turns out, the deputy mayor had dared to question one of Guo's land deals and stood in his way. The result? The deputy mayor was thrown into jail, giving Guo free reign to build his Pangu Plaza, a dragon-shaped luxury complex of hotels and apartments, featuring a seven-star hotel overlooking the Beijing Olympic Park. In actuality, this plaza was a grandiose monument that served as a testament to his unwavering determination and relentless pursuit of success. He could oversee his previous endeavors from the vantage point of this new edifice, further fueling his ambitions and brewing a storm for his next vision. He quickly became one of the wealthiest men in China with a staggering net worth of $4 billion at his peak. He knew how to play the game, cultivating relationships with powerful politicians and business people to get land rights and everything he set his sights on. He even had insider informants about the corruption and secrets within the Chinese Communist Party, which he used as leverage against his enemies. Of course, with great power comes great enemies. Guo was accused of all sorts of dirty deeds, from bribery, embezzlement, and kidnapping, to fraud, money laundering, and even rape. But that didn't stop him, not at first anyway. In 2014, one of Guo's close business partners, Ma Jian, faced arrest after new scrutiny came to light from Kaizen Media, controlled by Hu Shuli. The media company delved into the business and legal documents on Guo's dealings, going as far back as 1993. They revealed a mysterious and sophisticated career that boasted opulent real estate endeavors, lucrative investment funds, and securities firms that seemed to have come to fruition with remarkable ease thanks to Guo's elusive and cunning persona. His charismatic charm and unwavering reliability cultivated key allies, enabling him to secure deals and outmaneuver his competitors with ease. Despite his connections falling to the wrath of official anti-corruption campaigns, Guo remained unscathed, evoking a sense of intrigue around his business acumen and wily tactics. But Guo would soon learn that he too would be arrested, so he packed his bags full of money, packed his family, and fled China. He rebuilt his empire from scratch in New York City. With the use of multiple shell companies registered in Hong Kong, USA, Canada, and the British Virgin Islands, he always had access to his billions. He bought a penthouse apartment overlooking Central Park for a meager $67.5 million, and he even got himself a mobile headquarters, a $37 million yacht named Lady May. 
Talk about living the high life. Guo didn't just sit around living the good life. He had a bone to pick with the Chinese Communist Party, and he wasn't afraid to take them on from his luxurious hideouts. He accused them of all sorts of misdeeds, from corruption, human rights violations, and cover-ups and scandals. He refused to allow Kaizen Media to sully his reputation, and he tried to convince the world that he was innocent. And how did he do it? With his social media accounts. Guo has amassed a colossal following on his YouTube channel, which he has utilized as a platform to promote and amplify his unparalleled business prospects to his most devoted supporters. This guy was the ultimate con artist, but you can't help but be fascinated by his audacity. Acclimating to his new US identity, Guo began making some powerful friends, including Steve Bannon and even the one and only Donald Trump. Guo managed to cozy up to the former president of the United States and even joined him at his swanky Mar-a-Lago resort in Florida, where he made sure to snap plenty of photos to share on social media. Guo actively endorsed Trump's 2020 re-election campaign and used his social media to promote controversial conspiracy theories like the mysterious Q Anon. With his flamboyant personality and extravagant lifestyle, Guo even earned himself the nickname, the Donald Trump of Beijing. The pinnacle of fame and fortune seemed to be within Guo's grasp, but as they say, all good things must come to an end. In a fleeting turn of events, his association with the infamous Bannon thrust him into the eye of the storm. Guo was implicated in a massive legal case involving the fraudulent collection of funds through the We Build the Wall campaign. The walls of Guo's safe haven in the US were crumbling, much like the ones he fled in China. Bannon was apprehended on Guo's luxurious yacht Lady May, sending shockwaves through the corridors of power. Bannon pled not guilty and was later pardoned by Trump. Guo's controversial past only added fuel to the fire. With the spotlight firmly fixed on him, Guo's already contentious reputation was further tarnished. The drama and intrigue surrounding his every move only intensified. Guo Wangi's downfall was a spectacular and dramatic one. The once high-flying billionaire who fled China and gained political asylum in the US made powerful enemies along the way. He faced lawsuits, investigations, and threats from all sides. But little did his supporters know that his anti-China crusade was a front for a massive scam that milked thousands of his online supporters out of more than a billion dollars. The scheme was simple but effective. While presenting himself as a champion of democracy and human rights, he also promised high returns on investments that never came to fruition. Along with his financial advisor, William G., he swindled investors into handing over their hard-earned cash with the promise of big profits. The money, instead of being invested, was siphoned off for Guo's lavish lifestyle and other dubious activities. However, Guo's luck ran out. In March of 2023, when FBI agents arrested him at his luxurious penthouse. He was charged with leading a sophisticated conspiracy to defraud his online followers. He plead not guilty, but it wasn't enough to convince the authorities, and he was denied bail. If convicted, he faces up to 20 years in prison. It's a shocking and ignominious end for a man who once had the ear of powerful politicians and the support of thousands of online fans. But as the saying goes, all that glitters is not gold. Guo's rise to power and fame was built on a foundation of lies and deceit, and now justice may finally be served. Guo Wangi's fraudulent activities knew no bounds. He and his accomplice, Qin Ming Ji, devised not one, not two, but three schemes to con unsuspecting investors. The first scheme involved selling shares of an unregistered media company called GTV Media Group. It claimed to expose the secrets of the Chinese Communist Party. Guo and Ji promised investors high returns and special perks while lying about the company's value and growth prospects. And instead, they lined their pockets with the money of the investors. Guo then turned his attention to the cryptocurrency craze and began his own digital currency, G coins and G dollars, which he claimed were backed by gold. Through an online platform, gclubs.com, they sold these coins to investors, promising massive riches and the ability to exchange them for other currencies. Of course, the vast majority of the money raised ended up in Guo and G's pockets. Their third scam involved a fake agricultural project called Himalaya Farm Alliance. 
It's supposedly aimed to develop organic farms and provide nutritious food to those in need. Guo and Ji convinced investors to lend money to the project through an online platform called Himalaya Exchange, again promising high interest rates and repayment guarantees. But once again, the funds were diverted to personal accounts and shell companies, all while the project's existence, location, and performance were all lies. Guo Wangi, whose real name is Ho Wan Kwok, had made headlines with his arrest. And things took a dramatic turn when a fire broke out in his luxurious 15-room apartment while the FBI agents were still searching it. It was absolutely wired, a source said at Guo's luxury apartment. Everything that happened in there, especially in the solarium, was recorded, every word. The origin of the fire is still a mystery, but speculation is rampant. It's believed that the apartment was meticulously outfitted with a labyrinth network of wires, and the flames were cleverly orchestrated remotely as a response to an unwelcomed presence. Today, the empire of the cunning Chinese tycoon remains shrouded in mystery as it slowly unravels before our very eyes. He now finds himself struggling to maintain control over his $3 billion investment fund, which was initially established in the year 2008 with the support of the Abu Dhabi royal family. To add insult to injury, his assets on the Chinese mainland have been seized or sold off, including his iconic Pengu Plaza, leaving many to question how a man who was once thought to be invincible could meet such a sudden and mysterious downfall. Be sure and subscribe, and thanks for watching. If you thought this story was a roller coaster, check out these videos next, and I'll meet you there.